Hello everyone, Kerry Griffiths here, or Kerry the Crafter to some of you. Now, I've got a bit of a project on the go and I wanted to sort of introduce you to the introduction of it. That's a bit of a contrary for a start. Um, although I'm not sure how much you're going to see of it in the future until it's done. It'll all make sense when that's finished this anyway. Okay, under the video there, one of the options is a button that says thanks. Now, I don't normally talk about that button um, because I'm not... I just don't feel overly confident talking about that button. But if some people find it, they like to support my work and my YouTube channel by contributing small amounts of money. Now, I save those up and I turn them into art supplies. And lately I've had a couple of really generous people and subscribers and I've thought, you know what, there's a project I really want to do and I now have enough money saved up to be able to do it and I'm going to do it now. Now, one of the things I really, really like is doodling, but I don't doodle. Well, I do doodle, but I don't doodle well. Um, and it's something that really irks me because it fascinates me and I love it. And when I've seen other people's doodling, I it's fascinating to me. And a friend of mine, Darcy, from Darcy's Misadventures in Mixed Media, I've asked her about it a few times. She said, Kerry, you just need to let go. Well... Darcy, I'm not the sort of person who lets go easily. Um, and then I took in some of my own advice when I was talking about collaging. The only way to get better at collaging is to collage. And I thought, you know, Kerry, the only way to get past this block of doodling is to doodle. So I thought, right, we're going to do that. So tick one, Kerry's going to start doodling. Um, we'll doodling more to hopefully find my own style in doodling. Um, Secondly, over the years, I've had lots of you requesting that. Kerry, can we have a digital of that you've just created? And can we have a digital of that you've just created? And one of the things that's always held me back is not that I don't want to share my work with you, but not that I don't want to turn it into a digital. It's just usually there are elements on that piece of art that are not mine and are copyrighted, and I can't actually share it with you um, because I don't have the license to do so. However, over almost a year now, this folder is now full of all of my stencil designs. I designed them. They're mine. I don't need to ask for copyright. I've got it. Um, also, I'll just pull one of them out. Um, I have a range of foam stamps that I can use. So everything in these stamps are mine. I've designed them. Um, so I thought, right, I'm at the place now where I can actually create stuff using my own art, my own skills, my own designs, I will then own that copyright. Therefore, if I create something I like in this project, I can then turn it into a digital, which will make you happy, which will make me happy. Um, one other thing too, last year I was asked about these. These are the little shape gel plates. And I had a couple of subscribers saying, Kerry, can you show us how to use them? I bought them, never used them. And why have I never used them? because there hasn't been the appropriate project to use them on, but I can use them in this one. So, excuse me. <clears throat> so what am I talking about? So I took the savings from the money that was kindly donated to me and I bought one of these. Now, I use these as art journals once a year. They're not the cheapest art journal in the world, but I love the paper, I love the setup, I love the book itself. And um, the thanks, gave me the freedom to buy another one this year. So what I'm going to do is, this is roughly A4 in size, that's a British size, probably a letter size in America. And um, this is how it's normally used. Well, I'm going to use it in this orientation. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do um, a background and use there are other elements of my own on it. So I'm covering my mouth, you're probably not hearing that. So. I'm going to use it in a porch, um, in a landscape orientation. I'm then going to create backgrounds in it. And then I'm going to use those backgrounds as a vehicle to do doodling in and use. I've got a whole load of stamps coming your way that you're unaware of yet. But you might see, well, you will see them in July, I think, uh, which will f I've designed to fit in perfectly with the whole doodling theme. So it does mean that I can create pages in this. And if I really like them, I can then turn them into digitals so we can all enjoy them. So I thought that was a good idea. Um, the downside for you is I don't mind popping on occasionally and creating a background. But I think it's highly unlikely that I'm going to doodle 
with a camera pointing at me. I think my anxiety would probably go through the roof at that point. Um, but I will share, if I've got pages I really like, I will share them with you. If maybe I've done a few pages and I'm quite happy with them, or even maybe I'm not happy with them, I've learned a lesson from doing them, then I will share them with you. Um, the only thing I'm likely to share is occasionally making the odd background before I doodle. Hopefully that doesn't upset you, it's just um, my anxiety wouldn't handle knowing the world is watching while I'm doing something that I'm not competent at or even brave enough at. Um, also, I wanted to leave the, the title and everything on one of these because these are designed by um, an artist here in Britain called Diane Reevely. I really like her style. I've followed her for years. She does background. She does doodling. She uses stencils. She uses stamps. She uses cutouts. She uses lots of other stuff which I don't intend using. But I really do like her style. And I've been influenced in her by her style when it comes to working my art journals. So you are likely to see maybe a nod towards that in some of my pieces and I'm happy to happy about that I think the woman was an absolute genius um she designs for Ranger by the way so I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to flip this camera over and we're going to go to an overhead because I've got a kind of a process that I'm going to follow to actually take away the procrastination from me a little bit when I'm creating um and I think I'm going to do one background while I've got you here because it would be cruel of me to talk about stuff and not do stuff. So I think maybe we'll try and pull off a background. Remember, no doodling. I'm not doing borders. I will just basically use a couple of my stencils and we'll do a background or something. Just a bit of a play. Um, in future, mm, I might just title these, these videos Doodle Days or I might make a playlist called Doodle Days and that's where stuff will go, but bear with me because this is all new to me and I'm not sure where we're going. So I think it's time that I basically zipped this, flip the camera and let's have a look and I can explain more in depth what I'm doing, the process I want to use and I'm going to have fun with this. And knowing that I don't have you guys watching me while I doodle means I'm going to enjoy it more. Um, but then I'm going to really enjoy sharing my successes with you and if we get to the point where I'm happy enough to make some digital downloads for Etsy, I'm more than happy to do that because it means that I can use them as collage papers. You can use them as journal papers or journal signatures. I'm going to make them all the size where they could be folded in half and turned into a journal page anyway, which is why I'm doing them in landscape. So I said I was going to zip this, didn't I? Let's flip this camera over and see what I'm talking about. So here I am at my messy mat. Messy mat, obviously, because I'm going to be using paints. So let's have a look at this journal, um, this art journal. Comes in different sizes. I also think there's a black paper one as well as this sort of one. Um, I think there's a square one, there's a smaller version. Um, I'll see if I can find a size for this one. I can't remember the size of this one. Okay, 64 unlined pages. I've got a feeling, well, I'll get a ruler on it in a second, right? Let's open the closure up. So basically you have an envelope on the inside to store stuff and you have an independent spine here. Now, I find I really love these, they lay flat when I work on them. Um, although if you listen to Diane Reevely, she will say, if you're gonna do lots of art journal or stuff in them, take a few pages out so it doesn't break the spine. I've always done that and not had a problem. But to be honest with you, I think on this instance, I'm actually going to um, going to not take pages out because all the mediums I'm going to use are basically paints and inks and stuff like this. So I think they're going to be fine. Right, let's give you some, I'll give you some measurements. Right, so the pages are eight and a quarter or 21 centimeters wide and they are 11 and a half tall, which is 29 centimeters. I think that, that might be an American letter measurement. Anyway, that's, just, that's what I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna use it in this orientation, purely because if I'm using anything that soaks through the page, because I won't be using the backside of the page, I'm less likely to cause damage to another spread. 
if I get all the way through the book, I can also turn the book around and go back the other way. Now, when it comes to the very first page, it's this sort of setup. I usually just glue that to that page. It's not a problem. So this is what I'm going to be working in for all of them. Now, let me show you that process I was telling you about that um, is going to de-stress things slightly for myself. Right, so I've cleared the decks a bit. So what's this sort of method I'm thinking of using? Now, contrary to belief, I do not have huge amounts of paint, and I actually quite like that because it forces me to mix my own. So I have a box full of cool paints. This is my cool collection. I have a box full of warm paints. I'm talking colour families here. Let's move that over one more minute. And then I've got an odds and sods box, which is basically metallics, blacks and white. Now, I'm always going to accept that I can use white and black. So I'm not classing them as colours because one is the absence of all colours and one is all colours. So and don't ask me which because I always get very confused about that. Um, so those are going to be my standards, black and white. I can choose to use them. I can choose not to use them. Um, I can make a colour a different intensity or depth of colour, I can make it darker, I can make it lighter. These two will mean I can do anything. Then what I'm going to do is metallics will be, if I choose to use a metallic, I'll use a metallic, but um, I can't see there's going to be a lot of metallics used by me in this doodling process. So what I'm going to do is whenever I choose to do a page, and this is only to begin with, later on I may break away from this, I'm going to choose either my um, warm colours or my cool colours. So for this one, I'm going to work with warm colours. Um, let's put that back. Sorry, I probably shook you then because I put it back in storage. Now, the reason I keep my paints in these boxes is I don't allow myself to buy any more paint until something gets used up and taken out of this box. So I think for me, I quite like a yellow, not a mustard yellow, actually. Um, or maybe a mustard yellow. No, that doesn't look like a sort of yellow I want. Let's use some orange because I like orange. And have I got, oh, where's the pale yellow? Pale yellow is probably about the same colour as the page though. Oh, stuck down with paint. Um, maybe I will use that. So, right, and that's actually a good thing to, let's move this out of the way. Now, I would prefer when using paints for backgrounds to use craft glues because they're more fluid or I would use something that is intentionally a fluid paint. But you have to be careful because it will absorb into the background really quickly because the paper is absorbent. With the heavy duty paints, what I would do is I will mix a little bit of water with it to soften it down a bit so therefore it's going to end up more this consistency because the method I'm going to use is I'm going to use a baby white or a wet wipe to do this. So that's that's my plan to use two colours of the same family, have the options of black or white. And then on top of that, I'm going to allow myself to use a maximum of two stencils. So I pulled out Hopeless Harlequin and I pulled out Rose Bouquet. These are both my designs. So I'm going to pull those in when it comes to this stage. Um, so I think that's that sort of outlined how I'm going to move forward. So it means that the only procrastination I'm going to get or dithering time is going to be, is it cool colours? Is it warm colours? And then which two colours within that? Now, they're, they're what I would call soft guidelines or soft rules for myself. If I look at something and go, you know, that could really do with a touch of something else, I can reach for a complementary. I can reach for a contrast colour. There are no rules in art but it helps me with my decision making, let's put it that way. So, um, I'm using cheapest chips, um, wet wipes, baby wipes, any wipes you want to use. Now I have been told that there are now wet wipes on the market that are biodegradable. So I haven't found them yet. Someone did actually mention which ones they were. And I wrote it down and I can't find that bit of paper anywhere. But next time I actually buy them, does that say recycled? I can't read it, it's in green. Well, it's not plastic anyway. 
Right, bear with me. Um, so anyway, the next time I buy wet wipes, and I don't use them that often, as you all know, I do cleanups with the damp face cloth. But in this, this is the correct thing to do this process with. So I've flipped open my um, new art doodle book at, at a random page. I'm then going to get a piece of washi tape because I want to put washi tape along here just because, yes, I'm a bit of a neat freak. I just want to make sure that I don't get paint all the way up to the other side, just in case I do go all the way through this book and want to come back in the other direction. So I'm just putting some washi down. I'm choosing washi instead of masking tape because I know it's likely to lift off without tearing my page. Step one. Step two, my paints. These are the two colours. Now, um, if there has to be a mantra for what I'm going to do, it has to be that less is more because I'm going to be doodling and probably doodling in black. I'm going to put a sheet of something underneath this page just so that if anything goes over the side, it's not going to mark the ends of all my pages. Now, to work as a palette, so if I move that over slightly, I've got my ceramic tile. You've seen me use this so many times. Um, and I'm going to use the orange one first. Now, giving it a little bit of a shake because that's the way I always do paints. Um, I'm going to pull out a wet wipe. Now, I don't have a very fine misting spray. My spray really is a big old bowl and it sprays out large amounts. But what I want is I want something, is there anything in here maybe, just to slightly dampen my page. And I'm gonna wipe it over with a clean wet wipe. And I want the page slightly damp so that the paint doesn't immediately get sucked into it. Now it's an extremely hot day today. I'm in shorts, which anyone who knows me knows that's a rarity, um, purely because I don't, I don't want things to soak into the background. Right, I'm taking my paint and I'm actually working it through because I only need a fine coating of the paint. So I wanna make sure I don't have a big blob of it on there. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm going to do a really light covering of the paint on here. Probably not that light, however. Am I using the wrong part? I'm probably using the wrong part. There you go. Now, I'm not worrying that it's absolutely perfect. That's not the name of the game. I don't care whether it's straight up and down. I don't care whether it's horizontal. I'm literally taking away the colour on the page. Now, for me, this is really difficult because as you can see it's as random as I'm ever going to get but you know what I need to embrace that more and I need to accept that if I stay within the confines of what I feel comfortable I will not develop as an artist or someone who is creative in the way that they work so got that down there now that's pretty much going to have dried really quickly so I'm going to use my water bottle put a little bit of water on on what I'm calling my palette. And then I'm gonna bring in some of this yellow. And I'm not sure this yellow might be too pale. If it is, I'm gonna go and grab a darker yellow or a more intense yellow. And I'm working it through the water so that I've got a slightly more, as I thought, this is a bit too pale. I like it, I love this color a lot and that's probably why I reached for it. Yep, I'm going to grab a, grab a blah, 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 say that again in English. Let's grab another one, right? Um, here, cadmium yellow deep hue. That's probably one of my favourite yellows anyway, so that's not, not a problem for me to grab that. It is very intense, as you can probably see there. So again, I'm going to come in, give myself a little bit of water on that. I'm not worrying that I'm using the same um, wet wipe just a different area of it, because I know that all of the colours I'm using and mixing on here are all of the colours that are already on here. So, got that on the go. I'm just going to bring that in. Yes, I was looking for a bit more intensity. That's what I was hoping for. Now, um, I'm going to start keeping any wet wipes I use, um, because I do know people use them to create things. It's not something I've normally done, but I'm going to bear it in mind and see whether I can start making maybe some journal covers or fabric papers from it. 
So that's the basis of my background. And as we know, we shouldn't judge our finished article as we're processing it. And that's purely because we don't know what it's going to turn into. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Just a little bit because I, I like white and I like to I like variety within my art pieces. So again, just dabbing off, dabbing on, building up a little bit, and I'm just gonna come in and streak some white through this. And what this will do is it will blend with the colours on here and it will just give a subtle little variation in the colour I'm using. Right. I think we're take that dark bit out of there. Right, I think that's a really good base. Now it looks really pale. Don't panic, it's, it's meant to be pale. If you go too dark to begin with, how can you go darker again? So, right, a little bit of a damp cloth for me to wipe my hands off in. Now I'm going to use um, a blending tool for the next bit. Well, I'll put the blending tool, there you go. Um, it's one of these things with the Velcro with the sponge on it. Um, I have used other things. But I do find this works perfectly for what I want to do. So let's start with which size I'm going to use. Right. So I'm going to bring in Hopeless Harlequin. It comes in three different sizes. So this is the 5x7. It's quite cute actually. I don't mind the 5x7 on there. Um, this is the 8x10. I'm liking that one better actually. And then there's there's a really big mama one, but I, I quite like this one actually, and I quite like the idea that I've got some of the breaking pieces on it. <clears throat> when I designed this stencil, I wanted it so that I could have something quite regimented, I could have something that was breaking away, I could have something cascading, so I wanted that in my piece to start with. So I'm going to take some of the orange, now it's the same orange we've already got down there. I'm going to put a bit on my sponge. And I'm going to work it in a circular motion. And what I'm doing is I'm loading, loading the sponge up. I don't want it saturated. I just want it loaded with a bit. Um, let's see. I think I want this bit here. Now, I'm not going to work all over it. I'm just going to work in areas just to give myself a little bit of shading. I don't want masses of dark diamonds on here. That's enough. Um... Down here we may have some of the breakout. And I like to work in threes. Um, I think a lot of us do, so I'm just going to put a few up here. That's just given me enough. I mean, it's, it's such a little amount, but that's enough on there. Right, the spare paint here, what I'll do is I'll pick that up with my wet wipe. And once I finish videoing, this may still be damp on the wet wipe, and then I'll go and wipe it onto another page. Right. Now, normally I would go through and use this to create things like dots and other pieces, but I found out when I started filming this, I've only got one of these sponges currently. I have just ordered, I took a coffee break, which is why there's a transition in the video guys. It was a case I suddenly realised I oh, had one sponge and if I didn't actually order them when I think about it, you know what, I will forget it. So all I'm doing is I'm just pressing this to clean off as much as I can because I want to put another colour into this. Now, I'm thinking we've got a pale yellow in here. If I put a darker yellow on it, that will show the roses up. So let me just take this now. We have three different sizes in the rose bouquet. Um, the 5x7, which is this one. I've got the Big Mama, which is this size. And we've got the other size. So I think one is 5x7, one is 9x12, and one is 8x10. I think... Oh, I'm a bit undecided. I quite like this size, actually. I, I was going to go with this size, but maybe I'll keep that out. Maybe I'll do roses in two different sizes. <clears throat> um, I'm going to use 
versus yellow. It just is yellow. Now this time I'm not going to water this paint down. There's no need to. I'm using it with a sponge. Now I have got obviously orange on here, but that actually doesn't bother me because what it means is I'm going to load the brush, uh, the sponge up, and the worst case scenario is I get more of an intense yellow. Now, as you can see, I've loaded it as I did before. Um, let's do this one over here. So just light circular motion. And I'm now concentrating on what I'm actually doing because I want the whole rose and the leaves. That's lovely. Right. I don't mind roses going off the page. I know it's not everyone's favourite, so... So just having a thoughtful moment, guys. I think I want that rose going off the page. Oh, did I shake you? Sorry. Now, I'm not looking for perfect. Remember, we're just looking for bits. Okay, I'm liking that. Now, I want to come in, I think, adding a little bit of this size is really going to play to... Should I do it from there? I could have it coming down, couldn't I? I think I want to add a little bit of white to this, just a touch. I can't imagine it's going to make too much difference. But I'm going to add it to my sponge and then add another really yellow to it as well. Uh, yes, yellow to it. And then I'm going to come in and I just want to lightly come over this area. I'm not looking for perfect covering. I'm just looking for that. I think that's okay. I don't mind that colour, that was quite nice. Let's just maybe put some leaves down here just to carry that colour to another area. And as we like threes, well, not we, I like threes. I'm wondering whether I just want to put two of the leaves there in that colour. <clears throat> and I feel like I want a third rose there. And I think I want to go back to the bigger size, but use a smaller rose on the bigger set. So it means I've got to go back to the yellow colour. The cadmium. Just need a little bit just to reload the sponge. Now, which one do I want? I've already got that one. I believe is that rose. Maybe this one. This could just be playing a little bit of peekaboo at the bottom. Hopefully I'm in shot. There you go. Loving that. So basically, for me, that's enough. I'm just going to wipe that up onto my wet wipe. As I said, you never know. I may be able to get colour onto another page when we're finished. So for me, that's enough for a background. So from here, get that eyelash off there. Um, for me from here on in it's now all a case of reaching for a fine permanent pigment liner. Um, I've got different sizes and different brands. I usually look for water resistant or permanent because I don't want it to smudge, I don't want it to smear. Um, no longer need that. And let's take this away because we're done with the paint. Now I can stick this to my bookcase, which is where I keep all of my spare washing, and I can use that several more times, and I think we're done. Um, I'm quite happy with that. I don't know yet what I'm going to do. There could be lines, there could be squares, I, there could be doodles. Well, they're obviously going to be doodles. There'd be squiggles, there, there could be anything. And I will allow myself, now that I've created that as a background, I will now allow myself to come in and do whatever I want on there. So this is the start of a journey for me, guys. Um, as I said, if I do some successful ones or ones I feel willing to share with people, I will do the odd. Maybe, maybe do one of those shorts, you know, it's a 60 second thing or 59 seconds. But thank you for understanding. Occasionally I might create two or three of these backgrounds in a video purely because it gets gives me a chance to showcase my stencils and showcase my stamps um, and uh, just be interesting. So I think I'm going to call this quits, guys. I think we're going to say that's enough. Um, 
Thank you for understanding that I don't always want to create every different stage of my art with a camera pointing at me. And that is because my anxiety, knowing that everyone in the world potentially could watch it, really makes my anxiety spike. Um, but thank you very much. Thank you for the support. And thank you once again for um, the lovely subscribers who did contribute and purchase this book for me to allow me to do this project. So until next time. I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'll see you again soon, guys. Bye-bye now.